SpaceX Starlink Internet has come a long way since I started using and reviewing this service with better performance comes features existing major internet service providers have, like data caps. Now it's more complicated than a full cap, so complicated the company sent three emails over six hours explaining the change, changing the wording of the data cap, then clarifying the change again. So yes, it's a bit complicated, but thus is life in 2022. Here's a review of Starlink after I've been using it for close to two full years now. In summary, coming into November into early December, the news is very good, honestly. There has been substantial improvement in the reliability, in the latency, and the consistency of the speeds. We no longer see, at least I no longer see, those high-end download speeds upwards of 300 megabits per second. However, it is certainly a lot easier to get something close to 100 megabits per second rather consistently. Um, overall, the product, it remains powerful. It definitely fulfills the purpose of getting internet pretty much anywhere with very limited installation or setup. Again, I've used this storm chasing. I've used this out in the middle of nowhere. I've used this on remote shoots. And you just plug it in, give it power, and boom, you have internet service. It really does work incredibly well. And again, this is particularly geared to places where internet is hard to come by, more rural areas where you don't have existing fiber lines or cable internet lines. And again, Starlink does that job phenomenally. So as Starlink continues to expand and more people might be interested in maybe trying to get away from their existing internet service providers, this is kind of a look at how it compares and stacks up to uh, what is kind of the norm. So portability is something that's really unique to Starlink and it's something that does work really well. But with that said, I do think it's needlessly expensive and needlessly an extra cost, especially given the fact it was free included in the price for a while and then they tack down the $25 a month extra cost. I think that is a bit steep. However, clearly they're just trying to get more money out of people that are using it for RV style life living. And of course, I use it very sparingly, so I would only pay for it as I go. And that's kind of nice. It's kind of like a pay as you go, pay as you need service for portability. Again, I don't think you should have to pay extra for it, but whatever. Here we are, $25 extra a month. Um, the big thing, of course, is the data cap. Uh, this has been something that has been newly introduced in the month of October into November. And so the data cap works like this. You have one terabyte of data during the normal business time, the normal business hours of usage. And you can use that in that month, that billing cycle. You can track that usage on your website, Starlink dashboard as well. So you can see where you're at. So far this month, I'm at 84 gigabytes. Peak hour usage it goes from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., presumably local time. So in that window, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., you have one terabyte to use. If you go over that one terabyte of usage, you're deprioritized and essentially will have worse service. However, off peak hours, so between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. during that overnight time frame, you can use as much internet as you want without having any issues with hitting the data cap. And so this does make you reconsider how maybe you do things or stream things or download things. For example, I had to get and reinstall Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on a few different occasions. And I wanted to test a, how the service works. And in doing so, by reinstalling and installing this over three time frames, I hit the data limit very easily. But if I did this at night, I wouldn't have hit the data limit or at least caused the data limit issue. So it just know that it is certainly something uh, that you can hit. Streaming content like Netflix, YouTube TV, it remains basically flawless. Um, over the last week of testing that I've been doing, I've not recognized any issues with buffering or stuttering and things like that. Streaming content to a device, that is something that works really well. The speed is good enough, and when you have that buffer of being able to download it, there is a minor hiccup, you have that buffer um, there. So streaming content, no issues. Even live content like Twitch, CSGO tournaments, things like that, or uh, YouTube TV, that all works great. Video calls. I have had a few hiccups, even most recently. It's mostly fine, I will say, but they're having a few brief hiccups, usually less than a second or so. And the way that most programs work right now, like Skype or Zoom, you really wouldn't be able to notice, and it would mostly account for this. Typically what you'll hear is as somebody's talking, 
it kind of will accelerate how fast they're talking. Uh, that's because it's kind of recording in a buffer as well. So for the most part, the way Starlink works, there are no issues with this. All right, so let's jump to all the data. And doing this review, this is a pretty comprehensive review, one of the biggest I've done uh, since I've been doing Starlink. This is spread out over two work days, so weekdays. Uh, that's when I did all of this testing. I did everything from speed tests to latencies, a lot, a lot of data to pour over here, but we have a lot of pretty charts to look at. So let's start going through them. So first of all, 59,000 Starlink test over the last two days, measuring download, upload, and latency. We're gonna start off there. The results are rather interesting and better than they have been in previous months of doing these tests. Starting off, looking at the average upload and download by hour, evening congestion, congestion, it really stands out rather clearly. You can kind of see when you have the download megabits per second, the average is over 100 megabits per second from midnight, mostly, through about 11 a.m. Then you start seeing some dips in the early afternoon, maybe more productivity and things like that, more streaming content, something like that. You see that dip in uh, download speed. As you head towards the evening, you get a bit of re uh, recovery around four to five o'clock. And then the evening, you really can see when the congestion takes over. So it's still fine. Um, you know, during the evening hours, you'll see that the download speed averaged out over that hour still is over 50 megabits per second, which is, again, good. And then it begins to steady out back near 10 o'clock or so when people primarily begins to fall asleep. The other thing is the upload speed. Upload has been something that I have been really critical of Starlink. If you watch my past videos, upload has been an area where they needed a lot of work. And there has been a lot of work. When you look at the average upload speed per hour over this 24 hour chart, you see there are well over 12 megabits per second from midnight all the way through 11 a.m. Typically in my past videos, it was a rarity to get double digits. To have this type of consistency is beautiful to see. You do see uh, some pretty big hiccups there on upload speed as you head towards the early afternoon and again through the evening as well, but at least it's above five megabits per second. And when you're over five megabits per second for upload, most tasks are fine. Uploading video and content, things like that, it'll hurt. But for most tasks, you won't really notice a big issue there. Let's now jump to uh, the download tests. So here is just a plot looking at every single um, test I've ran. And I also included the 250 test moving average. And again, what you'll notice here is a very interesting uh, tank there in the evening hours, especially between about eight and 10 o'clock or so, you really can see that download speed struggle. In fact, the moving average for download uh, in that about 8.30 to 9.15 time frame actually dips below 50 megabits per second. That apparently is when most people are streaming content and doing things like that. You do see another big dip right around 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Probably as people are right getting ready to go to bed, they might put something out as well. And then you see that slow, steady recovery as you head through 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. I think this data is just fascinating to look at. And that's why I ran so many tests. Again, 59,000 upload, download, and latency tests over the course of two days. You can really see some really interesting stuff in the data. Um, again, a running average over 250 seconds shows download speeds dipping to about 25 megabits per second at minimum uh, during the evening. So definitely some uh, big hiccups there. All right, let's look at the upload. And again, this is looking at primarily just the evening and upload has been my biggest issue, but even at peak usage during the evening, a running average would frequently hit about 10 megabits per second. Before again, double digit measurements were rare, even in the best of times. So upload has come a long way for SpaceX Starlink, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, but let's take a look at something that has significantly gotten worse with Starlink latency. So when you look at the evening test for latency, while the upload and download speeds have improved, the latency has gotten significantly worse. On my test server in Chicago, getting sub 60 millisecond ping, that used to be commonplace. But now in the evening, the running average is over 100 milliseconds. And this makes gaming and video calls difficult and competitive gaming 
straight up impossible. What the? Again, this will not impact, at least I haven't found a significant impact if you're streaming content to Netflix or Hulu and things like that. But gaming in particular, it is painful. And I'm gonna make a whole separate video based on Starlink's gaming performance. We're gonna do an update on that. That'll be coming up here in the next couple of days. So make sure to subscribe for that video. Why are they all in this house? Jesus, and the whole sniper rifle come on dog when you look at the hourly latency this is the average over a 24-hour time frame and you'll notice it's not just in the evening throughout the day latencies of about 100 milliseconds is increasingly difficult to come by and the worst of it is definitely in the evening you can see it gets over 130 to 140 milliseconds there around 7 8 to 9 o'clock in the evening but again this is just not good. Uh, this is something that Starlink has significantly gotten much worse at, uh, which is really sad to see. But again, we are at least seeing some improvement in terms of download and upload, which is really good news. A lot of data here to look at. We're gonna continue going here. So this is um, looking specifically at gaming. Again, we'll go more in detail with this in a future video, but I just wanna give you this. Uh, this is Warzone, looking at Call of Duty Warzone. We look at the first 30 seconds on Starlink. It's not just that the latency is high, it's that you also have these big swings in latency. For example, look at that green lion. That was game five of my test. You can see at one point we were over 70 to 80 milliseconds. We got all the way down at one point down to like 50 milliseconds. It's that big swing. And again, if you have a consistent latency, you don't notice it as much as you have these swings in latency. And that's something that you really do see with uh, SpaceX Starlink. All of that data can be kind of overwhelming. So looking at all the charts, all the data, all of the numbers and things like that, some takeaways is that upload speed, much better than it used to be. Download speed, more consistent, but slower than it used to be. Pick your poison there. Latency, much worse. Latencies have gotten significantly higher and more chaotic. Uh, you don't get as steady of latencies anymore. You get some big swings, uh, even just over the course of 30 seconds. But another really big thing that has improved with Starlink is reliability. In 48 hours of testing, I had just two outages for a combined four minutes and 12 seconds. And a majority of that was a system reboot, likely related to a firmware update. So that really didn't even have to do with SpaceX Starlink itself. And again, it has a long way to go. It still is launching satellites. We continue to see more satellites launched by a SpaceX to improve service, ideally. But they also are continuing to add more places. And so as more and more people get access to SpaceX Starlink, I do think it's important to keep a record of how things are changing and how things have changed. So I hope you found this video useful. Again, uh, a lot of information. Uh, I do have a link to a Twitter thread down below if you're interested in that. I did post a series of images of graphs and things if you wanna go through those more in detail. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Again, subscribe for more Starlink videos, internet videos, science-y videos, things like that. I do a lot of weird stuff on this channel. Subscribe for more of those. Again, we will have a dedicated SpaceX Starlink internet gaming video coming up here in the short term. Subscribe for that, and we will see you again at the next video.